Israel, Romania, Turkey, United Kingdom, Kazakhstan, Germany, Serbia, Switzerland, and Croatia. This signifies the expanding geographic range of the new art modules international net, which I hope will continue to broaden. I'm sure this is due to the fact that the title of the conference attracts international interest. Last year, the Institute of Art Studies was highly successful in attracting funding for its projects. This international conference, which seeks to rethink the model image relation in arts, is the second part of the conference on the same subject that was inaugurated three days ago. And it was successful not only because uh, the organizers se secured funding. Your program features title, titles of papers showing that interdisciplinarity is widely involved due to the specifics of the cultural environment and which symbolizes, synthesizes to a large extent various art forms. Hope this will provoke fruitful meetings and ideas for further collaboration. May I take this opportunity to thank you all for taking the time to come to the, art, uh, to the Institute of Art Studies to express my sincere appreciations uh, to the organizers and the Institute staff for their untiring efforts in the past few months. I would like mostly to wish you a timely publication of a book of your papers because the organizers, the organizers of this module are well known in over editing and in keeping deadlines. May all of you make great presentations and have informative discussions. Do feel at home. Thank you. Hello, everything. My name is Hanna Veselovska. I'm first time in Bulgaria, in Sofia. <laughs> I'm moderator, moderator of this section. And uh, it's very uh, honor for me to be invited to this conference, very interesting conference. And I will be led this section. And we'll start. A first report, uh, report by... Um, <laughs> Kamelia Nikolova. Uh, the title of this report um, from directors explication to performance. <laughs> it's, um, dear colleague, one uh, and guest of our conference, one of the most interesting and important issues in the text based theater in the question of the path from the director's explication to its stage achievement. The director's concept itself has various versions of development and formulation, from a general idea of the future production through the detailed written director's explication to an open director's plan, which is intended to be developed and transformed by the actors during the collective creative process. In this paper today, I would like to discuss the second case, how detailed director's explanations developed in advance became a theatrical performance. For the purpose, I will analyze an emblematic case in the contemporary history of Bulgarian theater. It is the production of the, uh, of the Seagull by Chekhov staged by the director Krasimir Spasov at the National Theatre in Sofia in 1995. After its premiere on 22nd of December 1995, Krasimir Spasov productions of The Seagull sparked a bitter controversy between critics uh, polarizing their opinions into more or less positive and highly negative. Why did this production provoke 
so heated situation in the middle of the 90s, six years after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the political changes in Bulgaria. Thus, the answer to this question is provided in the central arguments in the dispute. The main one was unexpected director's interpretation of the emblematic work by the Russian modern classic, defined it by one of the critics as a spiteful comedy. Generally speaking, Krasimir Spasov's interpretation may be summarized as follows. A sober, ruthless, and sadly ironical director's view on Chekhov's characters, which conceals behind their uh, cliched and pompous uh, chattering about literature, theater, and great, and great dreams, their own modest abilities and ambitions, as well as their wrong choices made as a result of in, an inaccurate self-assessment. Here is, uh, should be noted that this interpretation was so surprising because it significantly departed from a long-established tradition of staging, of staging Chekhov in Bulgaria. This tradition was based on a, a sustainable matrix within Chekhov's, uh, Chekhov's poetic, nice-looking characters were always opposite to the stale life of pre-revolutionary Russia, thus suggesting that the great Russian writer of the late 19th century had anticipated the revolution of 1917 and called for it. This matrix was imposed both on Bulgaria and the rest of the Eastern Bloc countries by the Soviet, great, uh, uh, Soviet theater criticism and practice along with forcing them in the late 40s and the early 50s to adopt socialist realism and the demanding ideological uh, remodeling of the classics. In the years that followed and until the, the end of the communist era, this matrix was periodical, periodically nuanced and enriched, but in fact remained unchanged. Krasimir Spasov is well as Spasov, as a rule, always makes an in-depth research and prepares detail, detailed director's conceptions for each of his uh, productions, especially when it is based on the classical text. In 1995, though, in the case of the seagull, he prepared his explication very carefully, carefully built on a remarkable study of Chekhov's dramaturgy and uh, its reception. The director who published uh, his uh, explication uh, five years uh, later, in 2001, in Homo Ludens Theatre Journal, and then again in 2012 in his book Notes from a Director's Diary, from the, uh, the Director's Diary. Thanks to these publications, we now have the original record of the director's concept of his production. In the large text of 27 pages, divided into eight short chapters, I would underline several basic points. The director tries to read the text as unprejudiced uh, as possible, with simplicity and naivety, forgetting about the many existing interpretations. In this in, in prejudice view, the characters of the seagull are clearly neither nice looking nor capable people whose great expectations, talent and love fail because of the stale social environment. But rather, these are people without dreams, without any particular talents and far from real longings for love. Mm. The director underlines one fact, which is very important in Chekhov, but usually overlooked in the stage uh, interpretations, and he makes it a, a start and he makes it a starting point for his interpretation. The life in the play is divided into two real and metaphorical seasons: summer and winter. 
This first three, uh, three acts, uh, acts developed in summer, a time of a short-lived uh, uh, holiday freedom, a time of uh, pretenses and play behavior. The fourth final act takes place in the late autumn on the threshold of winter. It is already winter, the usual real life of the Chekhov's uh, characters, a season without all illusions and games, a season of their <coughs> true realization and humble existence. The main theme of the characters in the play, it is the fourth point, the main theme, theme of the characters in the play are the endless talk about literature and theater. These talks, however, are not authentic. They do not result from the inter uh, internal need of those who are having them, being just empty chatter, imitation talk, as the director defines them. They are made up of uh, cliches from books and newspapers, culture columns. Making these empty talks about literature and theater in summer, Chekhov's characters are rather playing their dreamed roles, their invented self-identities. In winter, in Act 4, they see themselves forced to face their real personalities. A uh, real conflict in the seagull, according to director Krasimir Spasov, is the conflict provoked by the wrong choices of the characters of their life realization. These wrong choices of occupation, love, object, love objects, and missions in life are the reason why the dreams of the characters, and especially of the young ones, fail to come true. This applies to all of them, but is synthesized in the main event of the seagull, children's rebellion against their parents represented mainly by Treplev against Akadina and Trigorin. It is displayed as a revelation, uh, revelation of uh, literary and theatrical inventiveness as opposite to the established and routine uh, old art. In fact, though, it is a desperate revelation of children seeking to draw the attention of their parents who are lost in their own fictions. Uh, love uh, is the leading element in the seagull, as in, a, uh, as in all Chekhov's plays. The curse of his characters is that they are in love with someone who doesn't love them back, but loves someone else. This love is always imaginary, just striving at suffering and never real and share, shared. Krasimir Spasov offers another view on this traditional interpretation of love in the seagull. In his reading, love is uh, similar to the character's em empty chapter, uh, chapter, made up of cliches about literature and theater. They have similarly invented their love object and love life and have hidden themselves in this fictitious uh, patience. Impossible love is rather their excuse for having no real desire and goals, will and ambitious of fulfilling their potential. Let's now to see uh, let's now to see uh, how these key concepts of the director's explication have been realized in the production. Trying to see Chekhov, the seagull, as an uh, pre uh, prejudiced uh, as possible, the director shows to the audience people on a holiday who may be observed closely as the performances are played on the chamber stage of the National Theatre. Uh, these are nice-looking, well-dressed people in a relaxed holiday mood. An interpretation is immediately, immediately created that nothing could have prevented them from being well established and active in the realization of their ideas, desires, and dreams. But their cliched lines, their endless, too healing, and overexposed talks about their feelings, about their failed lives, etc., 
present them in a radically different uh, light, as self-invented people whose limitations and lack of uh, ambitions are hidden behind cliches borrowed from the books. The director uh, makes the director makes radical turn of the established images of the characters in the seagull. Nina, who is usually presented as a beautiful and poetic girl, uh, enthusiastically striving for art, in this interpretation is a very plain girl, inelegant and sentimental, but who is the sole one uh, resolved to change her life for the better. And she makes it using Trigori. All the rest characters are nice looking, compulsively nice looking, as the director has attracted, attracted an all star cast of sex symbols of that period, but that does not prevent them to be rejected and suffering on an uh, required uh, love. Uh, it, uh, uh, in the end, the, episode, uh, the episodes of the rebellion of the children against their parents, lack of, uh, lack of attention and empathy, have become key scenes. The children rebel by making wrong choices for their future. These choices are uh, dictated by children's will to be noticed by their parents through, do, uh, through those walks of life that alone could attract their interest. Treplev follows in the step of his mother's lover and even competes with his including by failing in love with an actress. Masha replicates the life of, of her mother, etc., which makes them a next generation of idle talkers and self-invented people. The genre of the performance is an ironical comedy with a tragic end, as Chekhov's instead on the interpretation of his play. The main, so, yeah. uh, the main artist, artistic device used to make it happen on stage is a dis distance ironical attitude of the actors toward their characters in the Brechtian way. This strategy is very precisely realized in the whole performance, and it has been this strategy that has provoked the sharpest disagreement over the director's concept following the premiere in the late 1995, as it makes a clean break with the idea of the nice-looking Chekhov's people as opposite to the stale social environment. Finally, it should be said that the theatrical production of The Seagull by Krasimir Spasov in 1995 really offers a radically new reading of Chekhov's play and the Chekhov in general in the context of Bulgarian theatre after the Second World War because it completely rejects the imposed interpretation of the dramaturgy as ideologically right and, and returns to the immediate, closer to the author, reading of this great modern playwright. Thank you, Thank you very much. And the second floor, Kabul Kalakov. Is it present? No. Hmm? Uh, and we go... Is here? No. 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 Maybe we go to the... Uh, to the third one. With the third one, it is. And uh, the next will be Nikolai Yordano. From social stereotype towards character, the actor Zahari Baharov, I think it's correct, <laughs> in his modern performance, Chantipoya, after Ruskov's uh, movie. <laughs> Hello, <clears throat> I want to share with you my reflections on acting of one of the most interesting and prominent Bulgarian actors, Zakhari Bakharov, in uh, his mono performance on uh, 
the novel of uh, Bulgarian author Miguel Ruskov, Cham Korea. And for our foreign guests to explain that Cham Korea is the old name of the one of the famous Bulgarian resorts near Sofia. The novel is based on the reality in the late 20s of the last century. And the main character, uh, Bajaslave, uh, he is a driver who organizes uh, touristic trips from Sofia to Champuria and back. The acting of Zahari Baharov in his performance interests me not only as a stage interpretation of an image. It is indicative of the way in which the actor builds anthropomorphic figures that can be recognized in the social reality. Regardless the method of work and the style of performance, it is always possible to find a social manner that the actor imposes in his or her personage. There is a level in acting process based on the recreation of social cultural models through which the actor approaches the stage image. This level is an intermediate phase in the actor's creative process on which the actor chooses social discourses, behavioral patterns, and cultural stereotypes that will be embedded in the personage. These are like scratches of the charcoal on which the stage image is later regenerated. It is about the actor's general attitude to words and things, which always has social implications. It's a kind of social commitment that is made most often at the border of conscious and unconscious. <clears throat> Chang Korea is a significant performance for the importance of the social manner by which the stage image is built. In Milen Ruskov's novel, the personage by a Slave is a true encyclopedia for the decade of 20s of the last century. In his stories, the decade relives with its political struggles, newspapers, trademarks, cool places in former Sofia and Bulgaria. At the same time, the parallel with today are astonishing. These parallels de deliberately searched for and found by the author. In the, novel, in the novel, the literary hero socially identifies himself as follows. On one, on one side, all are like Baigan. These are the bourgeois, so-called. And like Andreshko on the other side, these are the peasants, the broad people in general. I struggle between these two to blight. And to explain that Baigano and Andreshko are Archetypal personages in Bulgarian literature, often associated with the national character. In the performance of Yavor Gurdiv, this encyclopedic deployment of the character from the novel it's, is much more concentrated in the dramatic narrative of the personage. Bayeslav is supposed to navigate the situation supposedly always finds the balance between conformism and outbreak, between calculus and moral inhibitions, creating the impression that he'll, he will always survive, but ultimately loses his life. The poster of the performance portrays by Slavic's image in an adventurous spirit, but it is a counterpoint to the fatal end of the personage. And the real drama lies between the adventure and the death. Actually, the show, as well as, well as the novel, puts the, uh, puts the viewer and the reader in front of the paradox. We have a narrator telling his own death. The endless stories of Bayeslave are the engine of the action. He cannot stop telling the storytelling becomes his ultimate moment of life, like a confession before death. Zahari Baharov seems to play in, fright, in front of a company. The company is an as imaginative 
as it is real. This is the audience to which he turns apart, sometimes louts with it. Occasionally, at the most dramatic moments of his stories, he smiles smugly, which emphasizes his role of narrator and demonstrates irony to the personage he is playing. Something similar to the Brechtian effect of alienation, though not entirely. Or, as the actor defines in principle his stage presence in an interview, it is not a total transformation, not a character's command. Somewhere on the edge between the two, there is a very fine border. Watching the character, watching the audience, but I am no different from them at all neither from the audience nor from the character. A special tri triangle happens. Zachary Baharov, by Slave, <coughs> pronounces an unabated monologue in which he interwines the main story for the venture with the anarchist, a fugitive from the law, pieces of historical events, factual clarifications, curiosities, household stories, life lessons, fragments of the flow of his consciousness. He himself gets hot and excited, plays, comments, and imitates the other characters he tells. His wife, his child, even the bear, the penguin, etc. He is often politically incorrect, if we judge with today's measures. But it is done always with a slight parody, close to caricature. This is the charm of his stage presence. Apart from the hints of postures and gestures of the others, the main mean of imitation, in most cases, is intonation. It provides the dynamic of the narrative and keeps interest in moving from one story to another. By Slavis, Overactive storytelling is exactly what the Russian formalists have called a skas in literature, when the narrator does not just go out of anonymity, but creates a bright image that, like an actor, presents the story. Bayeslave is the permanent witness, present at what is happening, direct participant, but only as a carrier of the actual agents of the action. His point of view is always from a side, where the remarkable details of the big historical events could be seen. Exactly from that perspective, an apocryphal history of the First World War and of the 20s of the last century was told. The narration goes through the wounds received, traumas experienced, suffered humiliation through frustrations and disappointments, through anger and fear. What character is this talented narrator? Milen Ruskov, Javor Gerdev and Zakhari Baharov have achieved a distinct individuality of this character in whom strangely are mixed fear and daring, interest and humanity, analytics and mythological consciousness. Pyaslav is a kind of smart ass, somewhat of mocking bird, always ready to reach the dictum for life and the world. Sometimes takes the posture of Larikan, but is capable of experiencing compassion and understanding of the others. He demonstrates self-confidence, quickly changing with extreme emotionality, excitement, irritation, panic, walks, but also observability, ultimate sobriety and sagacity, at the same time curiosity and naivety. Bayeslave is always dissatisfied, sometimes reaching self-pity and self-indulgence. By nature, he is conformist. His life philosophy comes to the insights of the kind that life in trouble, i.e. in a cage, is longer than a life in freedom. Politically, he defines as a so-called white socialist 
but he is rather anarchist to every power and has in his self-awareness is dominated by nihilism. However, Bayeslave has a special charm. It comes from his ability to give an anecdote to every story. In his narrative, he borrows from the slang and manners which could be found on the streets and neighborhoods of Sofia. The regional color of this personage dissolves in the precisely designed social psychological stereotype of 20th century, of, of 20, uh, 20th of the last century, but also of our contemporary. Small private entrepreneur dare to buy by leasing an omnibus for group trips. That's why he possesses the self-confidence, but also the fear of insecurity in the world. Because the economic move he has undertaken has vowed him to a sort of lifetime enslavement, Bayeslave feels deceived by fate. This is where his constant complaint, grumbling and murmur comes. In front of others, Bayeslave represents himself as a little man, but in his own eyes he has a much higher self-respect. He distinguishes himself from all other social circles, the fatherland, the political party he belongs, the colleagues, even the family, are somehow far from him. The relation with them is sufficiently distant. This distance from all and from everything leads to the dramatic feeling of absolute existential loneliness. In his acting, Zahari Baharov strengthens and brings to the extreme the contrasts and controversies that the literary hero possesses as characteristics. The contradiction between his friendly sociability required from the professional engagements and the feeling of this existential loneliness is most evident, as well as the contrast between his personal self-esteem and his social insecurity. Although the novel and the performance are about Bulgarian realities and Bulgarian mentality, the character has more universal features. He represents the culture of complaint, the spirit of negation, but also the taste for adventure and for philosophizing of life. Thus, the personage, Bayeslav, starting from a colorful social stereotype and having reached a dramatic character, grows into an archetype of the man who is the child of the time <clears throat> between the two world wars, but also on something much larger, the hybrid between primitive and modern consciousness. Its outgrowth is the semi-urban and semi-nomadic man. In general, the person who is always between established and secure positions and is always on the edge of survival. An archetypal figure for the entire Balkan culture, but also for other crossroads of cultures. Thank you for your attention. So, uh, at first I will start uh, with my gratitude towards the organizers of this conference uh, because of the topic. The topic, I think, is exclusive and uh, it is, I can say, a topic of my life. In a way, as far as um, I have started to investigate this uh, topic as a scholar already, when I was, um, uh, um, I was at my master and real postdoctorate, thesis was on this topic. So for this 15 minutes, for me, it will be very difficult 
uh, to talk about something very broad that I wanted to, to share with you and uh, to get back some feedback and uh, some ideas on something that I'm working permanently in my life. So uh, the title is rather broad, uh, but I'll try to just to, in a way to show you certain most important things from it. It's from text to, to image in acting. In fact, from text to image uh, in acting, it's all in acting, let us say. Uh, so that uh, here I, uh, I'll talk about uh, something, how the text, is going into actors' interpretation. So here I'm talking about the basics of acting in general. So uh, how I have organized my things. I'll start with this, uh, that with one uh, quotation by Bernard Dore, who says that in fact this is the theater pleasure comes from this thing that precisely from the fact that we see how a text by definition foreign to our time and space, fits in the momentary space and time of the performance. So this is uh, the correlationship between the magic of theater to the uh, contemporaries. So further, uh, I'll say a few words because I'm going to talk about text. So uh, from text to image, you know? So uh, this is a very deep, um, how to say, um, term, text. But I have used here uh, one of the big uh, theoreticians and practitioners of theater, Eugenio Barba's dictionary, where he talks, uh, he says something uh, very, very important about the text, uh, that uh, the text, before referring to a written or spoken, printed or manuscript text, meant a weaving together. So in the text, it's put the interweaving, in fact, as a possibility. So uh, in this sense, there is no performance which does not have text. So it means that the performance itself is a text. So here I'm going to talk uh, about uh, the fact that actor or the performer, in fact, is a translator. So we are talking about translation from one language into another. Uh, so uh, here it's uh, very curious uh, that uh, Eugenio Barba uh, uses the etymology of the word text. That means uh, woven, constructed, built. So uh, this is the texture that I'm uh, going to discuss now. Uh, here, but I want to say, maybe first I thought how to do it, but I think that uh, maybe I shall give you one definition of acting, of Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, that says that acting is the performing art in which movement, gesture, and intonation are used to realize a fictional character for the stage, for motion pic pictures, or for television. You see here, uh, it is a rather conservative um, definition because it only takes the actor and the text, you know? The actor has the role to make the text. Here, but I want to quote uh, uh, Care Allen, who says, it's one of my favorite, uh, how to say, uh, sentences. The actor is something more that, than empty vessel to be filled in with the illocutionary wine of the playwright. So uh, I'll go to discuss uh, much more to put an accent on this, not how the actor makes uh, the text. Uh, we have text and we have image, but I shall discuss some other uh, problems about it. So uh, here I said, a fictional character, actor, and uh, acting, and here I would like to say that always we have to put one more thing. So Encyclopedia Britannica missed these things. Uh, this is the spectator. So if we're talking about uh, actor and image relationship, we always have to put in mind the spectator because the image of the actor, in fact, is created in the mind of the spectator. So uh, here I'll continue uh, very quickly with uh, one of the basic uh, theoretical points I'm using from time to time for uh, uh, analyzing acting and concrete examples. And here I'll, I'll show you, uh, my colleagues uh, know this, so we have translated this text for Homo Ludens once upon a time, and we are using it. It is uh, uh, Bert States and his uh, very nice book, Great Reckoning, Reckonings in Little Rooms on Phenomal Phenomal Phenomenology of Theater. So you see it's uh, written in the 80s, and it's based on certain semiotical, let us say, on Irgi Veltrusky distinction between theater as acting event and play as enacted event. But here he, he puts one more uh, measurement, and this measurement, uh, it is from the speech act theories. 
So uh, he discusses uh, I, you, and she, he, or uh, nowadays we can say it, <laughs> you know. Uh, so uh, such gender problem, but in fact, he puts it that in the different worlds we, we are discussing, we are bounding or interweaving together, as Eugenio Barba says, we are talking about the actor, that is his eye, but in the play, the character is his eye. It's the audience, which is you, but also other characters or selves in, in the play from the point of view of the subject who is uh, doing the things, and he, she. So, why I need this? <clears throat> because I have tried to uh, uh, make... One, let me say, it's uh, still not typology, and that's the reason I want to discuss, but uh, I, I'll try uh, to uh, discuss some very important uh, cases of this uh, relationship between the actor and the text. And I have created uh, this uh, kind of typology. I, I do not, uh, I cannot say that it's exhaustive, but I have used uh, several criteria. The first criteria, it is the closure and the distance between the text and the performer. Uh, the next uh, uh, criteria, it is the text on one hand and no text, whether there is a text or there is no text, because we have cases that we don't have text. Uh, the other criteria I have used, it's whether it's fiction or whether it's documentary. By the way, uh, Nicola talked about the documentality in Chang Korea, so it is a kind, I, I just uh, draw certain axes, theoretically, so these are my criteria uh, to build this kind of uh, typology. So here are the three uh, dimensions that I have used, and so also the typology I have used, I have tried a bit <clears throat> to follow historically the development of these uh, relationships between the text and the non-text. And the first case I have named the case of Thespis, or Thespis's case, maybe it's better to call it. Now I thought that it's better in this way to say in English. Uh, so uh, this is when actor, performer are all in one, or, you know. And uh, this case uh, is uh, the first uh, case of theater, uh, of uh, I mean, uh, European theater. And uh, here, of course, we have this year, a very good example with Iva Todorova that has two Icaruses, one for actress and one for, for her drama text. So uh, this is uh, such a case uh, rather popular, and I put it on the basic of my classification. Uh, we have uh, another possibility. Uh, it's the same possibility, but it's Zdrava Kamenova, but here we have also director, in a way. While Eva, she has a consultant. It's also important. You know, uh, there are uh, different um, differences in all these cases. So here, of course, uh, I give an example, Kamandonov, who is also uh, such a case that I'm discussing, the Thespis case. Uh, the next uh, case... Uh, it is something that Nikolai had talked already. It's a presentation of stage adaptation of a literary work. Uh, it's also very uh, basic because if we think about the Middle Ages, we can say that the liturgies, the mysteries and so forth is in fact staging in a way uh, the greatest text of the Bible. So uh, here uh, I said that I had in mind certain historical uh, ideas. So uh, here I show uh, this exclusive uh, adaptation uh, that was uh, shown on Varna Summer, it is the Great Inquisitor. Uh, here, uh, the, the, in this case, it's very uh, curious, uh, the, the example with uh, Dostoevsky, because Dostoevsky was a rather staged, and in fact, he is not a playwright, so, uh, but he's dramaturgical in himself. So here you see, uh, when we have uh, a dramatization of a text, then... Uh, I can say that the distance between the performer and the text is a very, very uh, long, you know? There is a lot of distance, and it passes through adaptations. Here I have put, you see, there is adaptation in French. The thing is Russian. We have translated it in Bulgarian. You see, we have here in the translations many um, to pass a long, uh, long road. And, uh, but here it's, uh, how to say, I said big distance, but all of a sudden it is, in this interpretation, the distance became very uh, close. Uh, so uh, here also on the point of uh, Dostoevsky, it's interesting uh, that uh, he has based most of the, his novels on real uh, files, uh, criminal files. So uh, this is also interesting point about Dostoevsky. So uh, here, 
Of course, example is uh, Milan Ruskov uh, with Jam Korea and Zahari Baharov as such type of relationship. Uh, the next uh, type of relationships, I I'm doing uh, this schematically just because the theme of the conference is, uh, allows to make some theory. Yeah. So here, uh, improvisation after scenario. Uh, you know this, of course, we uh, bind it with uh, Commedia dell'arte, but you know here we have an amoratus with uh, great, um, how to say, um, rhetorical texts. So there, we cannot say that in Commedia dell'arte there is no text. But uh, still, we're discussing the Zani improvisations. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, now I'm talking about improvisation. And here we meet another standpoint between the relationship between the actor and the image and uh, the text. Uh, this is the so-called complete denial of the text, when you start denying the text. And of course, uh, here a lot of work was done as ideas by Arton and Arton. And here uh, we can discuss when uh, the actor becomes to be naked uh, later in Grotowski's things. And when uh, the text is not of importance so anymore, but there is the text of the body, uh, this relationship uh, uh, is already that matters. And of course, it comes, uh, or it was inspired by Indonesian theater and uh, uh, from Indonesian interpretations, maybe of Le Gong. Uh, so uh, here, I continue with my uh, talk, and here we come to uh, the documentary uh, theater, based one on the document. So it is uh, according to my criteria, as I say, the closer the distance, and uh, there is text, there is no text, and there is it's fictional or uh, documentary. I'll give you here. Uh, we, we can talk a lot about the theater of the fact, the documentary theater. Nick also mentioned uh, this thing. Uh, um, Camellia talk, uh, talked about uh, fictionality and so forth. And here I, uh, I just uh, put one uh, very interesting uh, example. Uh, this is the verbatim theater, which is uh, interesting because it, it uh, wants to see the things, the, tr the true things. And the texts are true. And uh, two days ago, there was the premiere uh, of uh, Vox Populi. Vox Populi ma is making very interesting experiments on this point. But I have, uh, we can discuss this, uh, of course. Uh, and uh, two days ago, he has made, they had made uh, good by uh, Johan Reis. This is on uh, real chat. It is a performer, performance that is based on real chat, so that they're continuing with uh, these experiments in when you're going on the do documentary basics. Uh, so uh, this, uh, the next case I want to mention, this is writing on actors' back. And uh, it is a very interesting uh, case when you have a troupe and you have you know your actor, so you write the playwright uh, keeps in mind uh, what is the uh, potential of the troupe. And of course, we are coming here to Shakespeare, but uh, in Shakespeare, it's uh, I just give the fact that there are two actors who has made the first portfolio, and they say uh, that. This is the most true interpretation of Shakespeare. So uh, you see here the interweave between the playwright and the actors. It's very close. In a way, they pretend that all the versions, because there were prints before the folio, some prints, but here they pretend that this is the first true real print as Shakespeare has written it because they are the actors who played this stuff. So uh, here we can talk about uh, Yovkov and Albena who uh, just uh, sit it in uh, the National Theatre correcting uh, his texts and uh, trying to make it. He worked very hard you know, with the text and the actors, as we know historically. And of course, one uh, example of Valery Petrov and uh, Tanya Moselitinova and Slavka Slavova. And uh, here I'll just mention quickly, it's a very difficult uh, uh, to uh, say it's a kind of a very, uh, it's the presentation of historical figure. And here, uh, of course, I say the most, uh, I will give most explicit examples when you're playing uh, the party leader, for example. So uh, there, the, uh, the interrelation be between the text, the image, the historical figure, it is uh, really, we, we can talk uh, a lot about it. Four hours took uh, to the uh, makeup, uh, those who ma made the makeups, to make uh, Lenin, uh, who was playing uh, uh, Rachko Yabanjev. And the same goes for Georgi Dimitrov. So uh, here we come to something 
that is uh, the basics of theater, maybe uh, already in, from modern times. And these are my last two cases, and they're bounded together. Uh, the one is to be true to the text of the playwright. So it's, uh, I say it's modern, just because it comes uh, in a way with the ideas of uh, Stanislavski, uh, of um, how the, the director, it's a director's theater in a way that makes, in a way, the actor to be true to the text. And this is the case that Encyclopedia Britannica gives uh, in the beginning as I started. So uh, here it was interesting that this was a kind of uh, the normative critics during socialism against, uh, again wanted this truthfulness to the text. But uh, you see, we can talk a lot about this because it's uh, maybe uh, a lot of theater and examples we have in this case. And uh, the last uh, case I want to discuss, uh, this is uh, the fight for the authorship. Or this is where this, here we discuss uh, the director's theater, where the actor is uh, uh, also uh, has, has to fight with the text in a way. So uh, here we see it's uh, the modern paradigm. I have shown an example that it was the scandalous performance, of course, when you have some text but you interpret it. You, you see it's a simple. Uh, this was the talk of uh, Camellia, uh, by the way. This is the case of interpretation of Krasimir uh, Spasov also. Uh, uh, it's uh, here. Uh, I show Alexander Morfov in the 90s, you know, the great uh, uh, revolution, <laughs> reform in Bulgarian theater uh, uh, came from these uh, new directors who interpreted the classics in their way. And uh, so it's, uh, I have given some examples that you know. So I'll finish uh, with the fact that whatever is the relationship between uh, the actor and uh, the text, and you see there are many, many possibilities. We always have to think about a spectator because to create the life of a performance does not mean only to interweave its actions and tensions, but also to direct the spectator's attention, his rhythms, to induce tensions in him without trying to impose an interpretation. So the final talk is to the spectators. Thank you. Changing our program. Uh, now we'll do my report. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow uh, my, my colleague from Sophie will be tomorrow. Okay. Um. Um. The title of my report is Capabilities and Constraints of the Communicative Model in the Immersive Theatre. One of the remarkable qualities of the modern theatre is evolving nature of its relationship with audience. Emotional and mental, emotional and mental units between spectators and creators and ultimately their convergence have become its priority goal. That is why the theater seeks to strengthen this relationship by transforming spectator from on an object into a subject of theatrical situation, essentially a co-creator and co-author. Significant change in this direction became apparent due to a new ritual direction in the theater which had been formed throughout attempts to reconstruct the original theatrical forms at the beginning of 20th century. The principle of the right here became the key, and the audience began to engage in a variety of emotional and game modes. It was as if they were doing a right trying to activate to the spectator and be irrationally, almost unwillingly, was interacting with performers. A series of neo-folklore performances, the structure of which corresponded to the archaic ritual, was performed in Ukraine at some point by Vladislav Troitsky at the Center for Contemporary Art. 
um, DAH, the name of the central, uh, together with the ethno group DAHA Braka, Braha, stage an action called In Search of the Lost Time. This is photo from these performances. And resembling a long knee pre theatrical play, a rural wedding and funeral at the same time. Uh, the director came with a game that captures all the present in the audience, who would be sitting at a long board table and testing bread, potatoes, cabbage, and other. In the 2000s, already saw the European theater starting to stage performance where the communication between spectators and actors was token, taking place on a essentially new level and not only sense to the ritual involvement in the action. During these performances, the viewers does not just contemplate. The cross of the events may be depend on his reaction. For example, when the playwright or director envisage several finals, um, in this case, how the performance ends is decided by the viewers who take a vote in the intermission. Thus, the spectators take responsibility for the artistic results as whole, and the theatre seems to represent a model of civil society where the voice of each person matters and thus encourage the audience not to be indifferent to what is happening. Meanwhile, a significant change or correction is being made at present to what has been so characteristic for the uh, theater, a collective perception, because in fact, it ceases to be a perception of collective. After all, the spectators who come out uh, of the theatrical situation and witness the process of artistic creation and experiences ascetic influences um, have or do not have a personal feeling of empathy. A wide range of the individual theatrical experiences, sometimes contradictionally, leads to a situation where the theater needs to change the tactics of communication with the public, focusing now on the individual complicity of everyone present in the audience. For many performances creators, a personal feeling of the viewer's empathy becomes the main goal. In this feeling uh, that can really click and force the viewer to act, share his impression in social networks. The enthusiasm of viewer, the experience he shared in social network is what contributed most to the theater popularization. His personal undertaking provoked by the individual experience uh, will stimulate collective interest in the theater. The active viewers become the biggest authority among those who could recommend it others to see the play and cerebral helps promote the theatrical product. One of the effective ways to activate the viewers is to try and make him and a compromise in two events, turn into a subject of theatrical situation. In the Ukrainian theater, the public's involvement proves particularly effective when the here is artistic comprehension of a complex and socially sensitive issue. This was uh, what director Andrei Zoldek did when, at the beginning of the performance One Day of Ivan, uh, Ivan Denisovich by Solzhenitsyn, the audience happens to be passing by a dense row of bodyguards, actors with a large service dogs. In such an extreme situation, the public definitely finds itself fighting, being no longer indifferent to what goes around and thus emotionally and mentally involved in the action. In order to get closer to the viewer, the modern theater has also begun to reject the general public as such, segmenting the viewer into groups and looking for an audience that will be specifically suitable. By working with the individual audience, the theater essentially provokes an audience activity. 
sending the invitation to dialogue and ultimately complicity for a limited circle of spectator is typical of the immersive theater where creators and spectators function in a new way, both in terms of communication and aesthetics and the theatrical product itself occurs additional qualities of procedure. Today, the immersive theater in Ukraine is not very common, but its laboratory experience is already used in performance of the repertoire theater, as well as in production of various artistic action. In particular, this experience is evident in the creation of a so-called augment reality in the theater, which involves immersing the viewer in the illusion of uh, reality throughout gaming techniques and the use of various audiovisual technologies. One of the first uh, to be staged in Kiev was immersive performance made by the theater of Audi II and dedicated to the court case of Mendel Bailey's. This case was heard in the Kiev court in 1912 in, in connection with the charge of Christian boys ritual murder brought against a Jewish named Bailey's. The case eventually remained uh, unsolved and playwright, young playwright Dima Levitsky aims for the elder tour participant to understand independently what had really happened more than 100 years ago listening to the proceeding in a new way, and not in a court, but throughout earphones. These participants, of whom there are no more than 20, are handed out earphones, receivers, and task envelopes. A voice in the earphones uh, gives comments where to go, what to look, and what uh, to do. In addition, throughout the broadcast comes the city sounds, tram rumbling, wind noise, and rustling trees. Thus, the participants of um, Walkabout finds himself in the hands of a manipulation who immerses the participant into the history. Meanwhile, the main question which the immersant is being driven to ask does not concern what had happened. It is about what had provoked and continues to provoke hatred and aggression in people, ultimately leading to murders. The answer is not delivered in words. In words. It is supposed to be felt by other two participants who can see around for himself, as it were, the abundant environment, dirty fences, ruins of old buildings and assets. Uh, not intended for the theater, a popular issue, uh, issue universe in a nutshell, um, nutshell, by the British scientist Stephen Hawking, who despite his physical handicaps led an active scientific and social life, became a pretext for creating an immersive lecture play based on the use of visual technologies. Director Dmitry Zahozhenko created this type of play uh, practically by uh, textbooks of theoretical astrophysics. And instead of a plot, he asked the actors to ask spectators complex questions such as what is our universe or does it have a beginning and so on. Uh, the performance, uh, which takes place in a small space without the traditional division into stage and hall, where performances are constantly moving between spectators, is organized throughout constant appeals to viewers with specific questions and other answers to them or in their absent explanation. One of the first questions to ask is, what is more original of two, egg an egg or chicken, you see this uh, picture. Um, uh, and if sitting at an interesting lesson, the viewers are taken away by an intellectual game and try to recall something from the school curriculum or just guess. 
However, the lack of knowledge, and especially in such field of physics, becomes the case of conflict of these performances, during which many of the present audience feel uh, ashamed because they know about <laughs> astrophysics, nothing. So the spectators act as a part of the conflict. The party that understands it little in the way of gravity laws, unlike the, unlike the actors who must have learned about this. As a result, deprived of the opportunity to create a scenic image, the viewer in this immersive performance is essentially acting uh, too, along with actor, because he or she becomes a subject of the proposed gaming situation. Mm. In addition, this performance is not um, innovated in the form because the director only refreshed the experience of centuries ago when, with, uh, with the help of the theater, enthusiastic scholars would explain the, uh, to the public what electric current, X rays, and another. It's particular lies uh, the um, specific of this uh, performance um, uh, lies in the fact that the conflict provoked by the theater causes the audience to have life emotions that become to pretext for the further mental generalization. By thinking about astrophysics, those present in the audience become aware that they are subjects of a much more extensive situation in the universe existence with the infinite, uh, infinite possibilities and that the sense of human life lies outside of physical management. As, uh, you can see this. Uh, as a successful function of the uh, immersive theatre, without a technological component, that is without the augmented reality, and one of the takers, a highly socially sensitive and controversial perspective, we can talk about the performance, No Supper Tonight, staged in the Golden Gate Theatre by uh, French director, French young director, Julia Audry, and based on the Antonia Alamo play. Its key solution decision lies in the organization of space. Spectators are seated in a small basement, very close to a long rectangular table at which, on which and under, you can the actors. Um, the table is perceived here as a mag magic object, a bearer of many historical, <coughs> social, and theatrical meaning. Around the table, gather at night, spirits calling sessions were held at the table, the attention of gameless was focused on the table, and Mr. Ogon, Orgon uh, was hiding under the table in Maria Tachu. Events in the No Supper Today take place on February 20. 1953, uh, the evening when Stalin has supper for the last time with the foreign minister at his dacha. He is found lifeless the next morning and dies five days later. The set design in a room with closed door. Um, uh, the audience is included into a quadrophone scenic arrangement. A large table is in the middle, newspaper, old maps, phones, bottles, books. All scenes are felt intimately by the audience. Actors can whisper and be heard. Little gesture is perceived. The audience can close how to watch like throughout a movie camera in wide angle or close up shots. This is generate a lighting closeness with the past a shock experience and inside, uh, uh, inside show. At the same time, the general solution is grotesque because, um, um, uh, because 
The performance begins with the fact that Stalin climbs out from under the table, as are gone, where he just uh, listened to conversation of his close circle. The Commodore is a, like a friendly slap, which turns inevitably to a back step. Five young actors played old, paranoid, and hyperstantic uh, characters to experience double speaking, manipulation, and power intoxication. Actors work physically into a careful and detailed body language. Uh, the director of this performance say and uh, give uh, explanation for his method, we want to give to the audience a live exper experience of terror. We want to create a human laboratory of eternal symptoms of the tyranny. Thrown this situation and these figures, the play represent protected rooms when, where men rule the world, intimate by powerful meeting room where the oligarchs of this world meet. The performance tends to represent this place out of sight where political masks fell and characters speak freely. The performance makes here a clear sense to reveal the space and time that history kept away from us. We feel the need to track this past away the produce and evidence. Um, um, this is young actor which played Stalin, and this is the, um, the same actor uh, who plays Stalin, and this is final of this uh, supper. Uh, uh, he ate a uh, chicken. <laughs> the above three immersive performance testify not only banal reproachment of the public and theater, but also significant change in the perception of the viewer as such. In all these performances, the viewer is a person who deliberately enters to communication process with the theater without expanding comfort from him and after receiving an individual artistic impression, actively testify his position and then popularize it. In this case, the theater occurs an additional task, not only to translate communication of the public with the creators into trust, mood, and intimize the atmosphere, but also to maximize the potential of such a spectator. Such theatrical situation becomes specially a communicative zone where viewers and actors build new relationship and essentially impact upon each other. Uh, there are still underexplored mutual influence are indicative of indirect forms of communication in the modern world, uh, for which the problem of direct communication is one of the most urgent. Uh, communicative models offered by immersive theater do help it to perceive the quality of living art, but at the same time, they significantly reduce its zone of the influence. This limitation does not allow theater performances to be a real moderator of public discussion as, as it once was. Close location and small number of the attendance make such a theatrical activity similar to be a sectarian one. As a result, prospects for success of the immersive theatre lie in its own ability to immerse in the, a potential broader artistic space. And in Ukraine, the first steps, steps in this direction are already being made. Mm, that's all. Thank you. Very much. Um, I suppose I, was, I can close my, our sessions this first, and uh, we have a break for coffee. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, if if uh, uh, so, some questions. <laughs> Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, and uh, question to Ivana. Um, in fact, uh, I already gave one answers to my question.
question, but I want to know it particularly about some of the design of the that um, um, his collaboration with Yellow Green. We were talking about uh, how the Harry Botanic came for stereotypes or stereotypes and But uh, it's not only his work, because it's not a uh, uh, long spectacle in the sense that for common donors works. Uh, he is not the writer, uh, he is uh, not the director. And um, how could you distinguish? Not only you, how can one distinguish what is from, from the director in this transformation from stereotype to uh, character and what is the composition of the I think this is the most one of the most difficult questions. Uh, even when the director uh, is, is uh, uh, what about this performance? This particular, not sure. Uh, yes, this is the most difficult question. When you have an uh, interpretation of a novel which is not uh, sharply different from, from the, the, the content. And uh, I pointed several times in my, in my text that uh, it's a common word for me. I just don't have a word for me. But especially the actor in this case. Uh, I believe that he chose the social manner, so for the phone, and if someone other <coughs> who interprets this image, they'll be a fault with that one, mm -hmm. because the, the content is the same, the hero is the same, but the social manner will be different. And also about uh, the interpretation. The interpretation of the Harry Bacow, I insist that he um, he underlined the contrasts in the mentality and consciousness of the hero. Nice mm -hmm. He is dramatically controversial. This is, I mean, I, I believe, it's the um, contribution of, of the actor. Mm -hmm. This is the answer. Uh, in short, yeah, yeah. of course, it could be discussed along the. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, uh, it is very important uh, 
um, element of the iconography is one bridge. Maybe you see a little bit in the sketch. Uh, so a bridge from the central stage from this garden. Um, in a second, show it again. Uh, but you see, uh, you saw it. Uh, and this bridge uh, goes to the uh, to the audience and makes something like uh, it is uh, all of us uh, included in this uh, in this situation and we have been on the track of these heroes and so on. Uh, very simple but very impressive and important part from the performance. Sure. <laughs> okay. Connecting with this, uh, when I put a question to the mm -hmm. uh, my question is also simple, but maybe a little more. <laughs> and I guess you, you were speaking about that after the changes in Bulgaria, uh, there was a turn from neuromantic and uh, art figures in the channel. Place mm -hmm. to, to see the ugly and pregnant uh, common people on stage. Uh, could you say it's a tendency? Because I remember also a Gavana did not much on the stage of the National Theatre, maybe with the same key. Or do you think it's a very different? Um, uh, uh, Nina, it's a very, very important question uh, because uh, the struggle, how you can say, the dispute about this performance. It was very important because it drew a lot of mm. a lot of heat. And uh, you are completely right uh, to mention uh, um of just uh, Albania and uh, one year before um three sisters uh, by Margarita Morgenova yes. and uh, four uh, six years uh, before uh, it is uh, uh, single by uh, all of uh, them, Margarita Morgenova and Ivan Dobchik. It is the opener of their uh, Laboratory, for example, uh, but uh, in this case, uh, they, how can I say, they keep a little bit this uh, respect to the uh, Chekhovian people, uh, like, and they uh, treated them in some how of uh, the emblems of the humanities in general. And uh, this uh, uh, spirit and this humanities. Uh, uh, in the struggle of the reality, always they fail, you know. Uh, it is the, uh, how can I say, um, uh, in general, uh, um, uh, emblematic uh, interpretation. But in uh, a bit different in uh, uh, Persius Pansu's interpretations, it is, how can I say, uh, a little bit political interpretation, because he directly uh, stopped this kind of uh, uh, this very good people, which is nice, well, uh, very well, uh, nice to look at, and so on. Uh, but the, the environment is very bad and it's very old, and they are uh, with these connections. And now it is the people have a problem, and it is in the problem, and not it is sociological and uh, political and. Uh, uh, ideological uh, interpretation. It is not the environment which is uh, made uh, this, uh, this character. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of conversation, but they shall make Please. Uh, I have a question to you. Uh -huh. uh, because, uh, well, it, uh, you discussed something that is uh, par excellence the theatricality of theater, so it's the relationship between the spectator and the audience. And my question is uh, bounded. You said the good and the bad of immersive theater as such. So you discussed this in this communicational model, to, not to be too free. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, I can remember I read uh, an article that in such immersive uh, performance, one uh, little girl was uh, asked to go to the stage, and in a way, uh, yeah, she was asked to bark. So it was uh, the, the level of offending the audience in front of the uh, yes. Yes, idea is this one. And I was uh, thinking because uh, recently uh, there are a lot of problems of uh, theater for children. So I want to uh, ask you for the potential of this immersive uh, theater for specialized audiences for certain creative processes. Mm -hmm. So we uh, cannot discuss two words about uh, this. Uh, can we discuss this uh, 
<laughs> I think in about uh, this uh, problem because uh, in Ukraine now we have some example of uh, German city of children. The German institute, uh, Goethe Institute um, demonstrates some uh, uh, some production for children, which uh, made in um, I. I forgot in Dusseldorf or another, another city, and this is some sort of interactive, uh, interactive play, and not a simple interactive play. This is play in which uh, engage uh, children and they uh, decide some problem and some social problems. Because this play, which I uh, saw in Kiev, um, is this play about. Uh, Refugees mm -hmm. about problem yeah. of your, your, your yes 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 uh, yes uh, we we have some example of this uh, but I say that the immersive theatre in Ukraine it's not uh, so popular it uh, I have uh, three four five example of this theatre and I want to uh, ask uh, audience uh, what about immersive theatre in Bulgaria. <laughs> Ah, during the coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this yes, is an example, but we shall discuss it. Yes, we have uh, five minutes to the end of the discussion because we miss one of our practice. Yes. That's right. Yes, I, I have no examples for the emergency theater in Bulgaria, but what to ask you in how you explain the success of your Beginsky, the president, oh. in the context of the emergency theater? It is not. <laughs> I try. But it's very difficult to explain. It's not difficult to explain because the same situation as Trump in the America is uh, Brexit in um, Great Britain is a situation of uh, uh, voice populi of um, uh, and uh, 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 it's first and the second uh, the attention for our president in Ukraine now is very bad because it's a traditional in Ukrainian society to do from our power a monster and uh, our political now uh, to um, uh, give characteristic to Poroshenko as Yanukovych but it is different uh, person and this is um, situation of our Politic, this is situation of world political popularization as Trump and Brexit and others, you know, and this combines uh, these factors in one way. But I suppose it all will be better than I suppose. Can I explain? Yeah, in some way. <laughs> in some way. It's difficult for me to explain this very difficult situation in English because it's no simple. <laughs> and it's no <laughs> question of that. There are many actors on the stage yes. now in Europe also. But uh, uh, Zelensky is not a actor. It's oh, it is. Uh, Schumann. Uh, Schumann, always. Uh, Schumann, he had not actors. Um, uh, yes, yes. And I said that uh, our politics uh, must to invite a theology to explain this phenomena because it's, it, it, he is not actors. Okay. Okay. So, the kind of is that from television or from theater or from cinema? Only in television, in uh, uh, television serials, only. Special television serials for um, okay. women, for one, for one audience, about uh, family, about uh, politics, comedy, com commercial comedian serials. Only. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> now we have a break. Yeah.